railroad memorabilia and investing. Our Toastmaster currently resides in Aventura. The title of his speech is The Power of Negative Thinking. Please help me welcome to lecture Larry Benoist. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, most welcome guests. Have you heard the story about the man beset with so many problems that he considered committing suicide? His marriage was in tatters, his wife had left him, his business was deteriorating, his health was going downhill, and his friends deserted him, all except for one. Concerned about his friend, his buddy said, why don't you go to the bookstore and get a book on positive thinking? I think that it would help you greatly. Thinking that he had nothing to lose, the man did so. He walked into the bookstore and sheepishly approached the manager. And he said, sir, could you direct me to the self-help section? The manager replied, if I did that, that would defeat the whole purpose. <laughs> <laughs> positive thinking. We hear that phrase all the time. How many speeches have we heard in this club and other clubs dealing with positive thinking? When you go to the bookstore, what is the largest section? Self-help. Self there are literally hundreds of titles beckoning you to open the pages of that book. And you're just hoping that the one you select is the one that will straighten your life. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, there are seminars costing hundreds if not thousands of dollars. Self-help gurus will tell you how you can improve your life. Unfortunately, it is my impression and that of others to whom I have spoken that these seminars, books, and speeches are of little help in the long term. You might get a high when you're listening, but in the long term, they are not of great help. Well, Dr. Benevitz, what do you suggest? I'm going to suggest to you something so revolutionary, you have never heard of this before. No one gets up here and says this. I suggest to you the power of negative thinking. <laughs> Can you say that? Dr. Benevitz, you're a psychiatrist. I say that because negativity is our nature. What do you mean? This was known for thousands of years. If negativity was not in our nature, why were we given the Ten Commandments? <laughs> thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not come to man's life, thou shalt not bear false witness. Yes? It was known thousands of years ago. When you're in a traffic jam on I-95, what do you find when you get to the end of it? It's caused it. People rubbernecking, right? Rubbernecking in an accident. What are people doing when they're rubbernecking? They're inviting negativity into their lives. So negativity is part of who we are, whether we like to admit that or not. When you watch the news on television, what do you see? Murders, rapes, abductions, bombings. Why? Because the producers of news know that this will garner them the highest ratings. Why? Because people are attracted to negativity. I say this, if this is our nature, let's use that to our advantage. I want you to listen to this statement very closely. The reason that positive thinking does not work is because it runs against the nature of our thinking. It is out of sync with our natural thinking. Let's use what we have. Let's use what our natural tendencies are. Let me illustrate the power of revenge. Most of us would think that revenge is a negative way of thinking. I grew up in a small town in the Midwest. I grew up in what, shall I say, is a community within a community. And in that community, 
Socioeconomic status was all that mattered. When I was six years old, my father died, and I lost my protector. From that time on, people would say to me, you can't make it, you're not good enough. Believe it or not, I had a playmate for three years. When we both reached the age of 12 years, his mother told my mother, they're not to see each other again. They just don't have that much in common. I knew exactly what she meant. She meant that I was not of that socioeconomic status. When you hear this type of message over and over again, it starts to affect your self-esteem. A lie repeated often enough becomes the truth. So what did I do? I turned that around and I said, you know, I have a good, I have a tendency and a proclivity for the academic, for the academic world. And I said, I don't care how long it takes, months, years, decades, I'm going to achieve my goal of becoming a doctor. And I did exactly that. And I must admit that I did visualize one time. A week before my graduation, I visualized accepting that diploma from the dean of the medical school. And I visualized taking that diploma and grinding it in the face of everyone who said to me, you know you can't make it. You're not good enough. <laughs> Fellow Toastmasters, negative energy and negative thinking is very similar to nuclear energy. Used in a judicious way, it can drive us with power through any obstacle. But used indiscriminately, it can destroy us and everyone around us. This technique of negative energy and negative thinking is not for everyone. But if you have gotten nowhere with positive thinking courses, <laughs> and if you, if you are in touch with your dark side, I invite you, I invite you to come over to my way of thinking. <laughs> Why? Because it's just not just the power of negative thinking. It is the awesome positive power of negative thinking. <laughs> Mr. Toastmaster.